With that, we go to Rockland, Maine, on the Presence Radio. Linda, welcome to the show. You're on the air with Dr. Michael Barber. Hi. Hi. Thank you for taking my call. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> you sound so soft, now, like when you're on the See, radio. See, I'm just cuddly. I, I'm just soft and nerfy. <laughs> I've, I've got my cup of tea and my teddy bear. Actually, my teddy bear is Dr. Barber, but that's a different story. Well, you're doing a whole lot better <laughs> than I am. <laughs> <disturbed. laughs> Wait. What I wanted to ask was about um, this doctor there said that uh, the books that were, are in the Bible canon are the ones that could be read in the liturgy. That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. All right. I, my question is more about the deuterocanonical books that sure. are in our Bible. I'm Catholic. Mm-hmm. I didn't say that, but I am. And um, they're not in the Protestant Bible. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Linda, is, is the question why? What is a Catholic book? Uh, uh, Catholic Bible oh, have, oh, have oh, the extra books? Well, it's, it's, uh, hold on, let me finish, okay? Right. Uh, I'll make it as short as I can. Um, why are they not in the Protestant Bible 1 or Part A, Part B? How come only a couple of them are ever read in the liturgy? The majority of them are not. They're right. just about two or three um. Yeah. L- Linda. Linda. Yeah. Let me use it a little hockey, a hockey analogy. You've you've gave, you've given a really good slap shot at the goalie. Let me just put my stick up and tip the puck as it goes by me <laughs> to ask Dr. Barber to define the, what what Linda means by the deuterocanonical books. Well, sure. Cer- certainly, there are books in the Catholic Bible that are not in the Protestant Bible or even in the modern Jewish Bible, and that's, that's what she's right. referring it's to. Not here. in the modern Jewish yes. Bible right. either. Right. And so. Why is that? Well, there have been books written on this, and I've done a lot on this myself, but uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time. I got to be careful here because I can get lost in the weeds pretty quickly here. But let's just point out, <laughs> let, let's, let's point out that um, if you go back to the early church fathers, you'll see that they use these, these uh, deuterocanonical books. And what's even more interesting, I think, for non Catholics is to find out that the Jews would use many of these non uh, these uh, deuterocanonical books, as they're called, uh, that are no longer in the Jewish Bible today, but for example, in the Babylonian. Talmud, which is a very authoritative source for Jewish tradition, actually in the Babylonian Talmud, Sirach is actually quoted as scripture, which mm-hmm. is really r- remarkable. It so, is. It yeah, is. yeah, so uh, this is really in- interesting. So, there's a long history here where um, somehow, sometime, because the Talmud's dated to about the fifth century BC, so somewhere down the road, these books are no longer read by, um, by the Jews. As as scripture. Some people will point to a supposed council that happened in the first century. It's called the Council of Jamnia. Jamnia. Mm-hmm. But now we know that council never really existed. In fact, um, it's, there's a great book. I thought this might come up, so I, I thought I'd hold it up because we've got a camera here, called The Canon Debate by Lee Martin McDonald and James A. Sanders. There's a whole article in here on the myth of Jamnia, that it never actually took place. Very scholarly discussion written by Protestants, in fact. And so w- many non-Catholic Christians will say, well, Jesus would have not read these books as Scripture. Well, the problem is, in the first century, there wasn't an official Bible that all Jews agreed upon, right? You have the Pharisees, you have the Sadducees. They disagreed on a lot of different things. The Pharisees believed in life after death. The Sadducees did not. That's why they're sad, you, you see, see, right? And, <clears throat> and so we know that the early the early Jews were you know, debating which books belong in the, in, in the Bible. It wasn't until the, the, the church decided these are the books that are going to belong in the Bible. Now, um, St. Jerome, who was tasked with putting together the official Latin version of the Bible at first, because he was working with rabbis, said, you know, I don't think these books should be in the Old Testament. The, The rabbis don't use them. But he ended up changing his mind on that. And you can see in later letters, he actually refers to books like Sirach as scripture. Um, so what ends up happening with the Protestant Reformation is Martin Luther doesn't like certain things taught in some of those deuterocanonical books, like, for example, in the book of Maccabees. In Second Maccabees, we have a line that would seem to imply pur- the existence of purgatory. Martin Luther didn't like that. So he wanted to take those books out, and the fact that Jews weren't using them in his day gave him a good reason to say, oh, look, at, there's a lot of debate. And there had been debate. Uh, some of the fathers, like I said, Jerome had doubts. But when the Church put the official list together, 
it included those books. And what's really interesting is if you look at a Gutenberg Bible, do you know what that is? The Gutenberg Bible? It's I sure do. Yeah, if you look at the Gutenberg Bible, it came off the, the printing press before the Protestant Reformation. They you'll see those the Deuterocanonical. There you go. I yeah, I've there seen you the go. Gutenberg Bible myself, yeah. actually. The, er, early, so edition, early front editions of the King James version as well. Yeah, yeah and you'll actually see them in uh, other Protestant uh, translations. Mm-hmm. There are there are debates among Protestants about, you know, this. In fact, what's really interesting is um, one of the arguments that the rabbis used for not including these books in, in, in the canon later on was, well, we don't have Hebrew copies of these books, and God only speaks Hebrew, you know. <clears throat> without, Oy without, vey. Right? Vey. <laughs> that would mean that none of the New Testament books could be Scripture, because, of course, they're written in Greek. Yeah, that's right? a, that, that proves, talk about proving too much. <laughs> right, exactly. Linda, does that help? Um, yeah, I, I, I just uh, was wanted to find out. Well, he had that, he stated a book that he had. Uh, I listen to the radio. Yep. Um, they don't have EWTN on television anymore where I live. They, Our dirty cable company took it off. Oh. So I can't see you. So it's, isn't that ironic that, that a dirty cable company would would show uh, all all manner of material right. that's not <laughs> EWTN? Wow. Well, right. Okay. Well, right. to the yeah. Can I can I recommend <laughs> uh, Linda? I I can't say everything I'd like to say about this, but there's a great book by Gary Mashuda called "Why Catholic Bibles Are Bigger." Fantastic. Yeah, we book. sell it here at Catholic.com. By the Excellent. way, Excellent. And I encourage you to pick that up because it is the best treatment of this at a popular level. And we'll, we'll pray you get a good uh, bishop there for the uh, diocese of Portland, Linda. Oh, goodness. Yeah. <laughs> All right. No, what's the name of the book again? Please? It's called Why Catholic to... Bibles Are Bigger. And who wrote it? Gary Machuda, M I C H U T A. M I C H U T A. Yep. Okay, thank you very much, and God bless. Merry God Christmas, bless. Linda.